and welcome to Arlington National Cemetery's Tomb of the Unknown Soldier Centennial Commemoration Lecture Series. I'm Jennifer Van Vleck, a contract historian at the cemetery. For this next episode, our featured expert is Dr. Alison Finkelstein, senior historian at Arlington National Cemetery. She earned her PhD in history with a specialization in historic preservation from the University of Maryland College Park. Before coming to Arlington, she worked at the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services History Office and Library and the American Battle Monuments Commission. Dr. Finkelstein is a specialist on military commemoration and women in the World War I era. Her first book, Forgotten Veterans, Invisible Memorials, How American Women Commemorated the Great War, 1917 to 1945, was published by the University of Alabama Press in 2021. Dr. Finkelstein's talk in this episode focuses on women, mothers, and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. For the past 100 years, women, especially mothers, have had a special relationship with the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. This lecture will explore these connections and examine the long legacy of how American women have honored the Unknown Soldier. Please enjoy the episode. Hello. And thank you for tuning in to this lecture about women, mothers, and the tomb of the unknown soldier. You may be wondering why we are devoting a whole interpretive talk to the subject of women. When the tomb of the unknown soldier was created a century ago, women could not serve equally in the military. So what role could they possibly have had in the establishment of this memorial? Through my remarks in this episode, I am going to reveal some of the many ways that American women played a critical role in the creation of the tomb and cemented its legacy throughout its first century. I will share their impact on this site and demonstrate that women have always been key players at the tomb. Along the way, we will learn about women's roles in the military and their significant leadership as memory makers at Arlington National Cemetery. I am going to focus on two groups of women. First, female service members and veterans, and second, mothers of service members. And I want to note that these groups sometimes overlapped and that there were other women involved that I could talk about, such as Gold Star Widows. But for time's sake, I am highlighting just these two specific communities of women. But before I really begin, we need to address the most fundamental and perhaps obvious question. Could the unknown soldier from World War I or any of the other unknowns buried at the tomb from World War II and the Korean War have possibly been female? The answer is almost definitely no. Women were not allowed to serve in combat in the US military until 2015. Of course, in recent conflicts, women were still often in combat despite this ban, but during World War I, World War II, and the Korean War, restrictions on all aspects of women's military service meant that women were not serving in direct combat in ways that would have rendered their remains unidentifiable. The history of women's military service is extensive and fascinating, and we could do a whole other talk on just that subject. But for today, what is important to know is that it is almost impossible that any of the unknowns buried in the tomb were women. But even without a woman in the tomb, female service members have had a long association with the tomb that began upon its creation 100 years ago. During the 1921 ceremonies surrounding the burial of the World War I unknown soldier, female service members were among the invited participants, an acknowledgement of their important wartime roles. During World War I, American women contributed to the war effort in diverse ways, both in Europe and on the home front. More than 16,000 American women served overseas, in military capacities such as army and navy nurses, and as volunteers or employees of dozens of civilian organizations like the YMCA, the American Red Cross, and the Salvation Army to name just a few. They also served as paid employees, directly supporting the military, often in uniform and under oath, such as the Signal Corps telephone operators known as the Hello Girls and the Reconstruction Aides, who were women who served as occupational and physical therapists. World War I even provided American women with their very first opportunity to officially enlist in the military. 
Due to a loophole in the law, women were temporarily allowed to enlist in the Navy, Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard. Although this did not last long, women seized the chance to prove their mettle as fully-fledged service members. And even though many of the other women who served did so outside of the military and were denied government veterans' status, they banded together in new organizations and asserted themselves as veterans nonetheless. One of these organizations was the Women's Overseas Service League, composed of women who served overseas during the war in any capacity. This group became the leading advocate for women veterans of all kinds in the post-war era. They devoted themselves to memorializing the war through community service projects, and they advocated on behalf of the unrecognized female veterans of the war. The Women's Overseas Service League took seriously the mission of memorializing the war, and they participated in several of the 1921 events for the tomb. They were granted a slot to conduct a brief ceremony as the unknown soldier lay in state in the Capitol Rotunda on November 10, 1921. They marched in the procession that transported him to Memorial Amphitheater the next day. Also marching in that procession were uniformed overseas nurses and women with the Red Cross, among other women. Over the years, female service members and veterans remained connected to the tomb through ceremonies and other events, too many to mention today. And as the military opened up more opportunities for women to serve equally, female soldiers were eventually allowed to volunteer to serve as tomb guards. The first female tomb guard earned her identification badge in 1996, and several others have served since then. We even had female tomb guards serving during the centennial. And in September 2021, history was made when the first female sergeant of the guard led the first all-female guard change. Now, when you watch the changing of the guard ceremony, you may see women out there on the plaza serving equally among the tomb guards. This takes me now to the second group of women I want to discuss, the mothers of service members. This story really focuses again on World War I. During that conflict, mothers had a privileged role in the culture surrounding military mourning. Since the time of the early Republic, American women had been encouraged to support the nation by raising their children to become patriotic citizens and sending their sons to the military. When they lost a child in the war, they became known as Gold Star Mothers because of the gold star adopted to symbolize the war dead during World War I. Their loss was considered the greatest, and many of these mothers formed and joined organizations to advocate on their own behalf. Because of this, Gold Star mothers were honored above other relatives for sacrificing their children for the nation. From the very start of the tomb, mothers and Gold Star mothers were given a unique role in the ceremonies and rituals surrounding it. For the mothers of service members without a known grave, the tomb was the only grave they had to visit. It might have contained the remains of their son, but no matter what, it was one of the most tangible places where they could grieve. The American War Mothers Organization was one of several that included Gold Star Mothers among its ranks. While not exclusively composed of Gold Star Mothers, the American War Mothers was one of their most featured representatives at the 1921 events. They too held a ceremony at the Capitol Rotunda and marched in the procession. The New York Times reported that when the Gold Star Mothers in the procession appeared, quote, the cheers became a roar. End quote. Mothers sat in the amphitheater during the funeral service and listened as President Harding, standing on the stage, specifically called them out in his speech. Harding explained that the unknown, quote, might have come from any one of millions of American homes. Some mother gave him in her love and tenderness, and with him her most cherished hopes. Hundreds of mothers are wondering today, finding a touch of solace and possibility that the nation bows in grief over the body of one she bore to live and die, if need be, for the Republic, end quote. By mentioning mothers at the very start of his speech, Harding acknowledged mothers as key constituents invested in the tomb. He publicly recognized how this new tomb would allow these mothers and other relatives of the unknown dead to finally have a place to grieve. 
He set the stage for the tomb to become a universal grave for all American service members, a site where anyone could mourn and memorialize a fallen American soldier. At the actual interment of the unknown soldier in the tomb, mothers again played a special part. After the first wreath was laid, two mothers stepped forward. Mrs. Emmett R. Digney, a Gold Star mother and president of the American War Mothers, laid a wreath accompanied by Mrs. Julia McCudden, a British war mother, whose wreath contained flowers from all parts of the British Empire. Standing among the nation's highest elected officials and military leaders, they were included among the chief mourners, recognized as essential to the creation of the tomb and those it memorialized. In the years after 1921, mothers maintained their connection with the tomb. The American War Mothers held annual ceremonies at the tomb each Mother's Day, and Gold Star Mothers frequently came to the tomb, both as individuals and in groups. In 1932, a memorial tree was dedicated in honor of the mother of the World War I unknown soldier. It is the earliest known memorial tree in the cemetery. Today, Gold Star Mothers continue to conduct ceremonies at the tomb, especially on Gold Star Mother's Day every September. With each subsequent generation of Gold Star Mothers, they have maintained their reverence for the tomb. Their unbroken devotion for the tomb is stirring to witness, as I did a few years ago at their annual ceremony. Many of them came to commemorate the centennial of the tomb that remains so significant to them. Since 1921, American women have served as stewards of memory at the tomb of the unknown soldier. They have included female service members, veterans, mothers, widows, and many, many others. Their participation at the tomb attests to women's long-standing contributions to the military, whether in uniform or as civilians. As we embark upon the tomb's second century, I am looking forward to seeing the continuation of women's long legacy at the tomb and the new chapters of meaning and ritual they are sure to write.